Okay, so now we're going to convert our PyCam file that we just downloaded that detects motion and takes pictures automatically into something that Python 3 can use, and then we're going to modify it um, in a later video as to how we can use that program then as a like a, as a module that we can import into a main function that will control everything. So the first thing you're going to want to do, again, if you haven't already, and I say this every time, sudo app get update. So update your Pi, make sure that you have everything uh, set up correctly, uh, updated correctly. Then we're going to have to install some packages. The first one that you're going to want to install, since we're using Python 3, is uh, setup tools. So sudo app get install Python 3 hyphen setup tools. Run that, and it'll take a moment for it to download. After I clear that, just so that we can see what I'm actually writing, we're going to download another package, and that package is going to be python3-dev. Uh, I already have the latest version, so okay, cool. Uh, let's get another package, and this package is going to be called python3-pip. pip Okay, so now we've downloaded pip, and just creating some extra room here, we're going to finally have to install one more thing and using sudo pip which we just downloaded dash 3.2 we're going to install a package called capital P pillow and this is like a imaging software imaging module that this thing will be using holy moly that took a while alright so now we've finished installing uh, pillow and now we can move on to actually changing our script our PyCam script so what you're going to want to do is on your Raspberry Pi, open up a idle3 window and we're going to open up a file and we're going to open up the PyCam file that is in our root directory here that we downloaded. I'm going to leave this one unmodified so that you guys have an unmodified version of it so that you can go through the code at a later time. What I am going to do though is I'm going to take this and I'm going to save it in the cookie directory on our desktop. And I'm gonna rename it because we're converting it for Python 3. I'm gonna call it P3 PyCam, all right? <clears throat> so let's save it as that. Okay, so how does this program work? Before we go about editing it, let, let, let's, let's walk through how it works. So first we import a whole bunch of libraries that do a whole bunch of different things. Uh, the author of this really did put together uh, some decent comments on it as to uh, explaining how it works. So the way that it works is it compares, it takes a picture and then it takes another picture shortly after it and then it compares the two pictures and it compares pixel for pixel the difference between the two pictures. So these pictures are not necessarily high quality but if you notice like a big change like let's say it was you know white before and then now you have a a dark object where the white was before you the camera you, you can detect the change in pixels when you analyze pixel for pixel and so you have these values here uh, for adjusting your threshold, your sensitivity, things like that. Like how many pixels do you need to have changed? How, many, how much do they need to change by? What's the magnitude of the change? And uh, you can adjust those values here. You can also, if you wanted to leave this as is and like take pictures through this, you can um, adjust the settings of the photos, but we're not going to do that in here because we're not going to use this program um, to take pictures. We're going to use it to detect motion. Uh, something that's important here where, you know, if you guys are seriously going to use this is let's say you're taking a picture of a landscape and it, it's, 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 uh, front door, you're taking a picture of people who come to your front door, uh, motion detection. Well, if you have a tree in your front yard and the wind blows, it's going to cause it to move. So you can actually set up where in the picture, which would otherwise be square, you could set up, okay, ignore this region of the picture and just analyze this region because you know in this region is a, a tree or a bush or something that would move. So you, you can, and it's all explained here in the comments, so you can adjust it however you see fit. So we have some functions here that <clears throat> analyze how much space we have on our Pi, so we don't like fill it up and cause an error kind of thing. Uh, we capture images, so capture test image, that's uh, capturing like the small image that we compare. Uh, we analyze how much space we have, save image is like save the high quality image. 
and then we have a the uh, we, we we set up like we get our first image and all that and capture a time and then we have this big while loop here and this while loop is where the meat of the processing happens and you can see for Z in the entire range for X in the entire range for Y in the entire range it's 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 scanning pixel by pixel every pixel in these test images that you get and ultimately what you get is if the condition take picture is true which is defined by uh, whether or not the um, you, you've triggered enough so if if the number of changed pixels is above the sensitivity level that we set then we take the picture we set take picture to be true and then here we say if take picture is true then we figure out what time it is and then we save our picture so this is the nugget of code that we're going to want to really adjust because we don't want to take a picture here but i'll get to that in just a moment so first we're going to convert this over to python 3 and demonstrate how it works in another video i'll I'll actually use this in a in a main file. So the first thing that we're going to have to do is hunt down all the print statements. So there is a print statement under save image because in Python 2 you don't need brackets in Python 3 you do need brackets. So we're going to hunt those down. So oh, overshot it. Okay, so we have a print statement here. So let's change that to include brackets. Now we're good. There's a print statement under keep disk space free. Here it is. So let's change that. Oops. And there is a print statement in our while loop under if debug mode. Print if debug mode. All right. So we want to change that one as well. So now we've we've changed all the print statements over to something that Python 3 is happy with, but we're not done yet. The next thing we're going to have to do, you'll notice right here at the top, here, let's get it lining up on the left, we're importing string IO. String IO is not something that you can import in Python 3, so I'm going to comment that out and uh, string IO is not available in Python 3. So instead we're going to import IO, which is available in Python 3. And then that, like that package uh, module string IO is used in the function called capture test image. So here we go. Here it is. Image data equals string IO dot string IO. So we aren't going to be doing that. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to say image data we're going to say image data is equal to and this time instead of string io we're going to say io dot bytes io because if you say string io it's going to which is a valid command it's going to give you an error so we don't want to do that and then finally we scroll down to our big like uh, while true loop here and you see all this X range stuff, get rid of the X and just leave it as range. And that should be all there is to it. So I'm going to save this and going back to this, if I clean this up, uh, we are in our root folder. So let's go to desktop slash cookie. And here you can see p3pycam.py, so I'm going to call that now using Python 3, so p3pycam.py. We're going to run it, and it's presumably running now, and if I stick my hand out, there we go, it's capturing the images. Cool, right? And then I take my hand away, and it should stop capturing images. There you go. See, it's working now in Python 3. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to um, use this as a module in a file that you and I are going to write together. Um, so it's kind of like something where we can pull the motion processing out of this and use it for our own purposes. See you then.